It's Monday and we're talking Mass Effect Legendary Edition possibly coming to Xbox Game Pass, some fighting game news, and more. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition might be heading to Xbox Game Pass as early as this week, according to an apparently accidental listing on the Xbox Store. According to the Polish website XGP and reported by VGC, the remastered collection of the original Mass Effect trilogy was briefly listed with the Game Pass logo on its box art. This has been an indicator in the past that an announcement was imminent, but also in some cases, just an error. EA, publisher of Mass Effect, offers its own subscription service, EA Play, as a part of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Its vault of games is routinely updated with new additions, with most new releases finding their way onto the service within a year after release. With Mass Effect Legendary Edition having launched in May 2021, this timing might have been accelerated despite the collection selling beyond EA's expectations. Developer BioWare is currently working on the next iteration of Dragon Age, but continues to tease the next entry in the Mass Effect series. Earlier this month, an image emerged that showed the return of the Geth, with previous crew member Liara also expected to make a return and potentially star in the sequel, but no release date or window has been shared. Riot Games revealed more information on Project L, a 2D fighting game set in Runeterra. In a video, the leads on the upcoming project went into detail behind the core gameplay for the title. As an assist-based fighter, players will build a team of two different champions that they can switch between during a match, and the game is set to reward strategic team building, on-the-fly decision making, and strong fighting fundamentals. Gameplay teasers showed off a handful of champions from League of Legends, including Ari and Darius, but the Project L's dev leads dug into a singular character's kit, Echo. This champion in Project L possesses time, manipulation, abilities, and the center of his kit is a forward-moving slash called Chrono Strike. The ability generates an after image that players can rewind to, and rewinding can be used to stack combos and keep opponents guessing Echo's next location. Echo's ranged attack is called Time Winder, and it's a bomb-like attack that can slow Echo's opponents for a few seconds. Taking into account Echo's entire kit, it's fast-paced and likely requires someone with dexterous fingers and quick reaction times. Riot Games' developers emphasize that their goal is to create easy-to-learn and difficult-to-master combat kits. They also touched on Netcode, assuring players that the team was working on creating a seamless combat experience. Riot Direct, an internal system that minimizes lag for League of Legends will also be used for Project L, and a seamless, lagless online experience for fighting games sounds like a dream. As for when Project L is likely to come out, it could still be a while. The core gameplay has been established, but more champions' kits need to be fleshed out, stages need to be designed, and ranking systems have yet to be built. Riot stated that the next update will likely come early in the second half of 2022, and it will aim for at least two updates next year. And keeping on trend with some fighting game news, Street Fighter's most popular characters are crossing over to Ubisoft's free-to-play fighting game Brawlhalla. Ryu, Chun-Li, and Akuma from the Capcom series have arrived in Brawlhalla as a part of the game's latest epic crossovers event. Ryu will have his iconic Tatsu, Shoryuken, and Hadouken, Chun-Li will definitely be showing up with her spinning bird kicks and kikoshos, and Akuma with his own Tatsu, air fireballs, Shoryuken, and more. In addition to the famous fighters, Brawlhalla has introduced a new mode called Street Brawl, which puts a Street Fighter spin on the game featuring health bars that Street Fighter fans will definitely recognize. The mode also has new KO text inspired by Capcom's game and a new Satsui no Hado emote. Brawlhalla also adds a new 1v1 map inspired by the Suzaku Castle from Street Fighter, and there are also four new avatars based on Zangief, the Shadowloo symbol, and a Hadouken. We also have a really cool video about the history of the Hadouken on our channel by our very own Kurt Indovina if you want to know more about that iconic move. And the GTA Trilogy is the game that truly keeps on giving the more players dive into it. At Videotech underscore posted a video on Twitter showing off some unfinished VR capabilities found with a debug command in Unreal. You can't view it in first person, but it apparently plays fairly well. What's the wildest glitch you found in the GTA Trilogy so far? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss your next GameSpot News update.